Hello fellow stackers, 365 here, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video we're going to be discussing an article that was published on the 2nd of December 2023. Now I will leave links to all of these articles in the description of today's video so you can go and fact check everything I'm discussing in today's video. I'll also be putting some screenshots up on today's video for you to have a look at as well as we go through it. Now, this is an article that talks about the introduction of CBDCs and the potential complications with them. Now, I have discussed the complications with CBDCs quite a few times in many different videos now. And one of my main concerns is the privacy side of things and also the inflation side of things. But in today's video, we're going to be discussing bank runs. Now, this isn't something I thought of before when I was discussing the negatives of CBDCs, but it's definitely something to consider. And that is why I thought it deserves a separate video to go through the concerns with banks closing down and bank runs when CBDCs are released. Now, anything I say in this video is not financial advice. And also anything I say in this video is down to you to fact check as well. Like I said, I will leave the information in the description of today's video, but you need to take this as my opinion. And this is just my way of sharing the information that I found online. So let's get into the video. Now, this is the House of Commons, the Treasury Committee, discussing the concerns with CBDCs when they're released. And I'm going to draw your attention to some key bits that I've highlighted that relate to the topic of today's video. Now, the first thing I want to draw your attention to is where it goes through the amount of other countries that are not only looking into CBDCs, but also launching them. Now, it says that the Atlantic Council think tank says that 130 countries are currently exploring CBDCs with 11 of them having launched a CBDC and 21 in the pilot stage. So you can see 11 countries have already released CBDCs and 21 have them in the pilot stage and 130 countries in total are actually exploring them and looking into them. So the reason I wanted to discuss that first is to show you that CBDCs aren't something that might come in, something that might happen. It's something that's definitely going to happen. It's something that countries are not only actively exploring, it's also something that countries are actually implementing currently. And as it says there, there's 21 countries that are piloting them. So there's 21 countries that are trialing them already as well. So something to bear in mind when you think about the, the concerns surrounding CBDCs, it's not if they come in, it's when they come in. Now, if we move on and we have a look at the next bit that I've highlighted here, you can see that it says Respondents to our inquiry highlighted various risks to financial stability that could be posed by digital pound. One of the most commonly cited risks was that of a bank disintermediation. That is the switching of deposits held with the bank into digital pounds. In a period of financial market stress, the ability to rapidly and easily switch into digital pound could accelerate the withdrawal of deposits from banks, a so-called bank run, and thereby increase the risk of bank failures. So like I said at the beginning of the video, this is not something I actually thought about when they introduced CBDCs. I never really thought about how it could trigger bank runs. Now, the concern that has been highlighted here, which is a very, very real concern in my opinion, is once it's made that you can transfer your physical pounds into digital pounds by a click of a button, by using a digital wallet or an app, Think how quickly people are going to be able to withdraw their money from their banks. Now, I believe that once CBDCs are introduced, most people will get behind them because most people don't understand the risks and the privacy issues and all the other things that concern many of us that are watching today's video. But most people are going to be converting their physical currency into CBDCs, into digital pounds, very, very quickly, I think, when they're released, because the way that they're going to be released, in my opinion, will be a way that it makes people want to have digital pounds. It will be introduced as a new trendy thing, like when crypto first come out and everyone wanted to get some crypto and was really excited about it. And it's going to be 
kind of sold to people that it's a safe way it's a quick way of buying things it's a, a cool thing to have download this app you can see your digital pounds on this wallet there might even be incentives download this app today and you'll get an extra 50 digital pounds credited to your account or whatever it may be so in my opinion it is definitely going to be a situation where when cbdc's are released most of the general population are going to be quickly converting their physical pounds into cbdc's on their wallets therefore their banks are going to be emptied very very quickly and lots of people are going to be doing it at the same time So this will therefore trigger bank runs, the same as if lots of people went to the bank in person at the same time and tried to withdraw their money from their account. As we've discussed at length before in videos due to fractional banking and all the rest of it, the banks don't physically have everyone's money. So if, say, even 200 people went to a bank at one time, for example, and they wanted to completely empty their funds, it physically wouldn't be possible. And the bank would have to start trying to source money from other banks and shuffle things around and all the rest of it to try and satisfy all of those customers that want their physical cash so if everyone's very very quickly converting their physical cash from their current bank accounts into their digital wallets and turning it into cbdc's or like we said in the uk digital pounds very very quickly you're going to have a huge strain on all of the banks So you are going to start to see the same effects that you see when you get bank runs and it's going to start forcing banks to go bankrupt and and bust and have to close down and all the rest of it. So this is where it circles me back to the importance, in my opinion, of converting this stuff into silver. Now, I think it's very, very important to convert at least some of your fiat currency into silver, something safe, something that can't just disappear if the banks start closing down because imagine you're one of those people that haven't converted your money from your current account into your digital wallet and it's stuck in the bank still and then your bank goes bankrupt what happens to your money now i don't want this video to be a whole video of scaring you and making you want to run to the bank and draw out your money now and convert it into this stuff because that's not not what this video is about this video is just discussing the article that i found and i also want to conclude the video by going through some things at the end of the video to make you feel more secure about keeping your money in the bank so i don't want to finish up on a a negative now banks here in the uk if they're registered properly they'll be protected by the fscs now that stands for the financial services compensation scheme and what that means is any money that you hold in your current account is protected up to eighty five thousand pounds So if a bank was to close down and your money was in there and you have under £85,000, you'll automatically be paid out by the FSCS. Now, I did also search how it works with joint accounts. And if you've got a joint account, it goes up to £170,000. So if you've got more in a joint account, which most people have, you're also protected to a higher amount. Now, that does mean that if you've got more than £85,000 in your bank, which many people do, especially those later in life, if you've sold some property or you've come into some money for inheritance or you've just worked very, very hard all your life and you have money built up in your bank and you have more than £85,000, then you're not protected by the FSCS. So therefore, in my opinion, it's very, very important to maybe think about switching some of your money. Say you've got 95,000 in your bank, for example, maybe think about taking 10,000 pounds out of that bank and moving it to another current account. Now, personally, me, I would move it into something completely out of the banking system, like precious metals, like silver or gold or something that is not connected to any bank. So it's just something to think about. If you've got more than £85,000 in your bank and banks start closing due to bank runs, then your, your money won't be protected. Now, it does say that they pay out automatically within seven working days. But imagine if all of the banks in the UK are starting to close down at the same time. How realistic do you think it is going to be for them to be able to process every single person's claim and pay within seven days. Now, I don't think that's realistic. I think that time scale is realistic if you have kind of one bank closed down. Say one bank closed down, which normally happens when there's a bank run, it's normally kind of just one bank at a time. You don't get multiple banks closing down at one time. Then yes, it could be possible because that's what they have in place. But if everyone at the same time is converting their bank balances into their new digital pound wallets, 
that's going to mean there's multiple bank runs and that's going to be multiple banks closing down at the same time. So I don't think that time scale is realistic. Personally, seven days, let me know what you think in the comments. But how long is it going to be before you actually get your money back out of the bank? So even if you have got under £85,000, how quickly are you going to be able to access that money? How quickly are you going to be able to get money out of the bank to be able to pay bills or to even put food on the table for your family? So it's definitely something to think about. There's a lot of things to take away from this video and there's a lot of things to dissect from this article. And like I said, I will leave a link to the article in the description of today's video and I will be doing some more follow up videos discussing other things that I've read in the article that concern me. But like I said, it's something to think about. And that's where it circles back to precious metals. In my opinion, it's very, very important, even if you don't kind of like the asset of precious metal, you don't think it's a great asset to have, you'd rather have an index fund or some stocks or something more risky like crypto. It's something, in my opinion, that's definitely worth having because it's a physical asset, it's something you can physically pick up in your hand. You're basically your own bank. Now, like I said, if suddenly all the banks start closing and you can't get hold of your money and that seven days turns into six months or two months or whatever it may be, if you have physical money, physical, real money, something that's actually worth value in your hand, in your possession, you can go somewhere to convert this back into cash and then you can start putting food on your table, paying bills or whatever you need money for. So that's why I always say when you have precious metals, you're basically your own bank. You're storing your own wealth in your possession. And it's a lot quicker to convert back into fiat currency if you need that fiat currency because your bank has closed down. So I'm going to wrap the video up there because I don't want it to be a huge long video. But please let me know in the comment section your thoughts on this. Like I said at the beginning of the video, it's not something I thought about when I've discussed CBDCs in the past. And that's why I wanted to do a video on it. I didn't think the potential of multiple bank runs when everyone starts converting their currency into digital currency. So as always, thanks very much for watching. I hope you found this video interesting and I hope you have a very nice day.